Hi there and a warm welcome to another episode of Today's Parent where we connect you with experts and provide you with information to make your parenting journey a bit more easier. I'm your host Christine Cassina. In today's episode we are talking about how to stay healthy during pregnancy, why it's important and there are many tips you can learn from today's show if you're expectant. In studio today we have Dr. Kakuti who's back to share with us how to stay healthy during pregnancy. Dr. Tari, mm -hmm. welcome back. Thank you. Always a Thank pleasure you. to have Thank you. you. Why is it important for moms to stay healthy during pregnancy? Well, there are certain, as we discussed last time, there are certain complications that can come up in pregnancy. There are also the common ailments that people get during pregnancy. So we do not want them to further any issues and cause further complications. Absolutely. A pregnancy is you have a mother and you have a baby. You're caring for two people at the same time. So you want to make sure that these ailments are picked up very early, complications are probably even prevented or picked up very early. Yeah. So you want a mother to have a healthy pregnancy. It's unfortunate that unfortunate that not all will have a smooth sailing pregnancy, but we thank God that majority will have an easy pregnancy with small ailments here and there, but we want them to be absolutely healthy because you want a woman to enjoy her pregnancy. Yeah. There's a gift, there's something coming, and she doesn't. you don't want a woman to have you know, a pregnancy that is making her wish when is this going to come to an end? And she's not, up, I'm not happy about it. So you want a woman to have a healthy pregnancy, enjoy her journey. Uh, it's an exciting journey to yeah, have. Yeah, I'm sure yes. all of us wish for that. Yeah. What is considered, in your, in your professional opinion, what is considered a healthy pregnancy? So a healthy pregnancy first starts even before you conceive. It is advisable in this day and age. And like, I think our mother's times were very different. <laughs> but now we do advise patients, seek preconception counseling. Get screened for certain conditions, high blood pressure, diabetes. Share with your doctor if these run in your family, then they can be screened before you get pregnant. Start your supplementation. If you are overweight, lose weight. There are certain things we tell you to do uh, for you to, to prepare you to have a healthy pregnancy. Right. Uh, the other thing is know what are the danger signs when you're pregnant. Discuss everything with your do doctor. Start your antenatal clinic as soon as possible. Now, antito antito clinic is very interesting because most women start based on when their friends started. Really? Uh, you're going to seven it? weeks. It's very early. No, it's too early. No, come as early as possible. And then we will cater your clinics depending on the t you know on on your pregnancy. If you're having an easy pregnancy, no issues. We do. We, you come every month or every six weeks. Some centers even six times when you're pregnant, or even up to four times. In rural areas, actually, we give four clinics because of the distance to come to hospital. Right. Nairobi is kind of different, you know. But you can cater your clinic depending on your patient's preference. She asks you, doctor, doctor, can I do have to come every month? And you say, well, you've had an easy pregnancy. We can see if you can come after six weeks. Start your antidote clinic. Start your supplements. Um, when, there's a, when you go to the clinic, there is, your blood pressure will be taken, your weight will be taken, your urine will be taken. Cooperate and do that. Because we want to make sure that you're going to have a healthy pregnancy. Okay. Yes. I'm just For moms who have been... Um they're not first time moms, second time moms, third time, you know, for your current moms. Mm -hmm. You find in your experience when it comes to antenatal, mm -hmm. with the first one, we are very serious. Mm -hmm. Then with the second one, there's a way you, we are thinking, ah, I mean, I could go I've after week, before. you've said week seven, week, yes. week seven, I could start this in second trimester. Yes. It's never that serious. It's Do you find in your serious. experience that to, with your second timers, third timers, they're, they're a bit more lax? Yes. And what advice can you give to them? Yes. So... A lot of second time moms, especially if the first pregnancy was easy, it was a breeze, you know, they're like, ah, I'm pregnant, see you, Gondra. <laughs> so they come at second trimester, and we're like, you know, there are things we normally want to talk to you about during the first trimester, so it's good if you start at the, uh, in the first trimester. Have your first clinic in the first trimester, get a scan done. Many women, especially those who, I usually say when I do, uh, mm. um, are not sure about their last period. So you may be thinking you may be a certain gestation in your pregnancy and you're not. That's the purpose of the first trimester. We do a scan to date your pregnancy. Because you may tell me my last period was in March. Then when I do your scan, I'm like, no, this baby is actually older. You were pregnant before. You know, so you it's good that first scan because the first scan, the earliest, the uh, scans that are done before 12 weeks are more accurate in dating. The more you carry on with your pregnancy, they give different dates that can tend to extend the week. So you right. start asking me, so the scan said my EDD is 22nd. The other scan now is saying my EDD is first of the next month. So the first trimester scans at least get one done during that time. So get your first scan, in, uh, scan done in first trimester, okay. then call follow up. After that, we can actually follow up 
your clinic's catering on what pre works for you. Right. Sometimes we will not allow you to do what works for you because maybe you have a condition we need to follow you up. Dr. now that today we are talking about staying healthy during pregnancy, let's touch on the danger signs in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So there are specific danger signs in pregnancy. The number one mortality rate in Kenya uh, and in the world of mothers is postpartum hemorrhage. But there's also what we call antipartum hemorrhage, hemorrhage during pregnancy. Any bleeding during pregnancy, even a spot. Do not call your friend and she tells you that happened to me and nothing and I was told it's okay. Right. No, please see your doctor. So bleeding, you should not bleed at all during pregnancy. The only time we want to see blood is once the baby has come out. So top danger sign number is one, bleeding. 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 Call your doctor. Bleeding. Go to the hospital. Go to the, don't even call. Go to the hospital. Because many will call. If you don't get me on phone, then you wait. Go to the hospital. The hospital will contact your doctor. Second danger sign is, especially during second trimester, is breaking of waters. So if your waters break, we don't want your waters to break um, before term. Yeah. So term is 37 complete weeks from 38 weeks. Right. So if the waters break before that, then that can uh, subject you to either pre, uh, pre, especially premature labor is before 34 weeks. Before Now 34 is the cutoff for maturity. When a baby is in there, there's something called lung maturity and there's a substance called surfactant that has to be formed. What happens is you want the baby to come out and cry and allow the small pockets of air in the lungs to open up. If surfactant isn't formed by 34 weeks, and normally it's formed at 34 weeks, then the baby will come out and cry, but the pockets are not able to open because there's no surfactant. Oh. So it ha they have to be given and it's very expensive. So we don't want that to happen. Any lower abdominal pains also before 34 weeks. Specifically 36. There's normally We normally don't want anything happening before 34 weeks. When the lungs have matured after 34 weeks, we can always say, you know what, the baby is mature, baby is about two kilos, we can deliver if we cannot push the pregnancy further. But we don't want premature labor, that maturity meaning the baby in relation to the baby's lungs. Right. Labor before, so any, if you have any cramping that is getting, the cramps are getting stronger. So you may get some cramps and tell me they're coming after two hours, I'll be like, okay, just observe. Yeah. Now, labor means you're getting contractions of the uterus that are increasing in intensity and the frequency is reducing. So if they are coming, if they are coming for 10, um, they are coming for uh, maybe 10 seconds after every 10 minutes, then they start coming for uh, after seven minutes and they're getting stronger, then you might be going into labor. We don't want labor before that baby is ready to come. So you also have to take care of that. If there are any pains, go and see your doctor. Right. We've talked about drainage of like what? We, why we are worried about the of blood before 34 weeks, we talked about the maturity, but also risk of infection to the baby. We don't want this baby to come and then there's an infection and the baby's exposed to infection. The under danger sign is headaches coupled with what we call epigastric pain, which could be leading us to high blood pressure. So if you have a headache, and most of the time the patient tells you it's throbbing on the sides of the head, but it varies from one patient to another. Right. So if a patient tells me I'm having a headache and I'm feeling some sharp pain, it's not really epic, it's not heartburn, then I'm worried, is high blood pressure going up? Uh, fainting episodes, those oh, no. can happen. We may not consider them to be danger, be dangerous because some patients get very low blood pressure in pregnancy, so we just have to go to the hospital and let them check your blood pressure. The other danger sign would be reduced fetal movements. Once your baby starts moving, keep be keen on those movements. The day they reduce, Call your doctor and run to the hospital like a mad woman. Right. Because the baby, the baby is active for a reason. They're supposed to be in there. They are alive. There's someone in there who's playing. So when they reduce, you need to question why the baby's movements are getting reduced. Right. So the other danger sign normally is, um, I think I've, I think I've covered most of them. I think that would be the ones I've covered. The ones I'm remembering right now. <laughs> there's yes. one. There's one. A common one. I, um, swollen feet mm -hmm. is, is a common one for many ladies. We don't. But when do you need to worry? Mm -hmm. We don't consider swollen feet mm. a danger sign anymore. Okay. So, but if your feet are swollen, so I've said they will, they may swell because physiologically the uterus is pressing on these veins. Right. So blood flow back to the heart, to the heart through these veins where the uterus is sitting or is sitting on is slower. So what happens? There'll be a bit of stagnation of fluid. Okay. Some fluid will move from the blood vessels into the tissues. Okay. But important is go to the hospital and say that my feet are swelling they should check your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. They may check your kidney function test and check your urine if you're passing proteins. If all is well, then really I wouldn't consider it as a danger sign. Okay. Yes. Swollen face, does it happen? Yes. Yes, that's, a, that's an important danger sign. So thank you for reminding me. 
when I'm walking, the dependent part of my body, dependent on gravity, is my feet. But my face should not swell. Is it because I'm not, like now I'm sitting, so I'm working against yeah. gravity, so my yeah. face shouldn't swell. So swollen face and swollen hands, that could also indicate your blood pressure is going up. Oh. So you find a woman telling you, I can't wear my rings, or she took off her ring and she can't put it back on. Get your blood pressure checked. Okay. Yes. Any sort of itching and, um, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to the intimate, mm -hmm. the intimate, intimate parts of a lady, mm -hmm. is, there, is there anything that you need to worry about? Yes. So the common ailment that we spoke about earlier was thrush candidiasis. So that is caused by the fact that you may have, a, your immunity tends to take a dip when you're pregnant. So thrush is very common. Okay. It's not considered to be a danger sign unless if it is superimposed with bacterial infection that can ascend into the uterus and cause the waters to break. Okay. Yes. So, so uh, any foul sorry. smelling discharge, yellowish from the vagina, then see your doctor. Right. And they should test it. The lab will tell them this is what is what the infection and then you're given appropriate drugs when you're pregnant. Okay. Yes. So apart from bleeding, what other sign that if mm. you get immediately you need to call your doctor? Breaking of the waters. Yes, you mentioned that. Yes, I breaking, breaking waters. Um, in the, uh, uh, but those, those two are the ones we're really worried mm. about. And reduce fetal movements. Okay. Please. So, and, and I've had women who've been told, um, they tell the you know, they tell a clinician, a health worker, my baby's not playing. Oh, size in Najua, the uterus is big. The, the baby is big. No, mm. no, 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 no. no. Go, they, let them do a scan. Let the scan say that there is no problem. But most of the time, if a mother comes to me 37 weeks and, you know, the baby's, the, the movements are reduced, I'll do a scan to tell me if there's anything I need to be worried about. But really, you may go ahead and deliver the mother because once the movement starts reducing, they tend to keep reducing and okay. you don't want to go to a dangerous level. Okay. Yes. You know, we focused on the mom a lot. Is mm -hmm. there any pointers you can share on how to keep the baby safe mm -hmm. during this time? When a patient is pregnant, um, uh, there are those who maybe they, they take alcohol, there are those who are smokers, there are those maybe who are illicit drug users or eat certain types of food, especially people who live in the coast. Some of them may be like eating fish like shark. You find they have high mercury levels, and it could be a staple in their diet. So high mercury levels have been known to either cause deafness in a baby, a baby's born okay. with deaf and, and blindness, because it does attack the nervous system. So we do advise that some, some of these things you have actually have to stop when you are pregnant. And what's amazing for many women who are even smokers is they actually stop smoking altogether. Oh. They will never smoke again. You've yeah, gone for course. nine months. They yes. actually, yes. it breaks. Because it is an addiction. We also liars you with somebody who's an addiction expert to help you. Because some, it's not easy. But many will tell you when they start smoking, the nausea actually will make them stop smoking. So you have to advise them on that. The other part about being healthy in pregnancy is exercise. Women overlook exercise and they think this is a gateway to just bum and not do anything. You have to exercise. Women who exercise and have a you know you make your body more agile more flexible tend to have easier deliveries than someone who didn't exercise and who was a couch potato you may be advised on bed rest by a doctor now only a doctor will tell you that do, you know we are restricting yeah. from exercise yes if you have placenta previa if you are bleeding if you drained water then we'll tell you you cannot continue the normal activities right some of them we have to write letters to your employer to give you sick off to some extent um even mothers who have babies like triplets quadruplets I'm telling you, from six months, they, they're going to take six, sick leave until the day they have their babies. Wow. So we have to advise them on how to be healthy. So there are those who may not be able to exercise because of the medical condition or the condition of their pregnancy. If you have triplets, quadruplets, it just is so big, you may, exercise may trigger preterm labor, okay. premature labor. So we may tell them, be on bed rest now. If you're having an easy pregnancy, a singleton pregnancy, maybe twins, you may be able to exercise. There are those who are very comfortable doing yoga. There are those who are comfortable doing Pilates. Um, what we would not advise you in terms of exercise is maybe using machines in a gym. Because right. if you fall, your chances of that's falling. A, yes, chances yeah. of falling. Maybe like you've never fallen yourself. before. Yeah. And maybe you fell before, but you're alone. Now there's another person, uh, another human being inside you. So the, the, the risk of injury and especially rupturing of the placenta is very high. Right. So we tell you if you're to do aerobics, you can do aerobics, but don't jump off the ground. Don't do step aerobics. So there are many activities you can do. Swimming is amazing. Amazing. Uh, those who jog, I know women who jog, but it's a, not jogging like 
I mean, it's not Elliot Kipchoge, you're standing chat and marathon. A soft you're joke. Not yes, a soft joke. And your body will tell you when, you know what, I can't do this. All right. Your body will speak to you. Other one is walking. If you don't want to do the gym, what? Walking. In the evening, walk home. On a Sunday, you have the whole afternoon to yourself. Go to Karua Forest and take a walk. Okay. Yes. Doctor, we are going to take a short break. Thank you. In today's episode, we are talking about staying healthy during pregnancy and we have Dr. Kakuti who is sharing a lot of tips with us. We'll be right back after this where she's going to share more do's and don'ts when it comes to staying healthy during pregnancy. Welcome back to today's episode of Today's Parent where we are talking about staying healthy during pregnancy. And in studio today we have Dr. Kakuti and a question has come in from Aching and Aching's question is, what is too much weight to gain during pregnancy? What is normal weight to gain and what is too much? Dr. Ari, what is your take on that? Thank you very much. Um, healthy weight gain is somewhere between 12 and max 15 kilos max 15 kilos by the end of your pregnancy 12 yes. to 15 yeah, even 15 we are pushing it most of the time we recommend don't, don't gain more than 12 kilos during pregnancy and 15 yani we have pushed it like okay don't okay because there are certain risks you're putting yourself into diabetes in pregnancy high blood pressure in pregnancy and the weight gain in pregnancy is harder to lose than the one who decides to lose weight and they've never been Absolutely. pregnant. Absolutely. Many women would attest to that. Exactly. Many moms would yes. attest to that. So if you gain 12 kilos, this is what happens. When you have your baby, so you have your baby, your baby is maybe about 3.5 kilos, placenta is about a kilo, the liquid is about a kilo, the uterus is about a kilo. So you're looking at about losing about 6 or 7 kilos in about a week. Or maybe to let's say within about six weeks. So if you've gained 20 kilos, then you only have another six kilos you need to deal with before your next pregnancy. And you can actually go back to your pre pregnancy weight. Now, if you gain 25 kilos and then lose seven, how many do you have to lose? 18. That's a lot of kilos. That's a lot of kilos. Even losing a kilo is hard. Even losing a Very kilo is hard. hard. So what happens is most women don't lose that. And there are women also who gain weight during breastfeeding because I understand you. you Breastfeeding, you expend a lot of energy. <laughs> then your grandmother, your mother, your aunties have brought you porridge. If you can take porridge without sugar, that's great. Majority can't. So you're adding more calories and eating. So there are some who also who gain exponential amounts of weight during breastfeeding. And then what happens is, if you don't lose that weight during your next pregnancy, you're piling on. So I've seen a patient who was 60 and be 103 by her third baby. 103? 103. Because she never lost excess weight gain during pregnancy as well as not losing it. The other thing I advise women is don't eat for two. Don't go for a function and tell someone to serve you two chapatis because we are two. You are one. Eat the way you were normally eating when you were not pregnant. It should not change. If your breakfast was a cup of tea and two slices of bread. It should remain. Just remain like that. The, maybe I'll tell you when it comes to, if you're eating, maybe add maybe a protein to your yeah, breakfast. Yeah. So you can add an egg. Or maybe a, a fruit. Yes, yes. So you're going, your caloric intake should increase by I think about 500 calories mm -hmm. per day from when you're not pregnant. But don't miss your meals. Have your lunch, have your a snack at 10 o'clock, your, your, your lunch, a snack at 4, and maybe something before you sleep. But should be considerably healthy food. So this, um, if you think that I can eat junk because I'm pregnant, <laughs> it is you who will be left with the weight. Babies might not, um, some women will have had them say, you know, I want a big chubby baby. Trust me, you don't want a big chubby baby. Because you are going to push that baby. <laughs> so you want a healthy pregnancy, you want a reasonable weight for the baby. We are still not very clear on whether whether you eat a lot of food, your baby will be big. I've seen women who are... What does research hundred... show, I wonder? Uh, not, we're not very sure. It's very varied because it varies from one race, genetics also come to right. play. Right, so so many yes. factors in, in play. Factors come to play. Yeah. So if genetically, I've seen a small woman like you give birth to a 4.5 kilo baby. Her and the husband were small and were like, then when we saw the Did guy you say 4.5? That then, is a big yes. baby. Then when we looked at the side of his family, we were like, genetics, they, they're big oh. guys, they're big guys. So he just happened yes. to be small. Yes, then you see another one who is 100 kilos and then the baby is a baby. three. Three kilos. Yeah. So really, we don't know what it is. So it's we don't 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 eat for two. Eat healthy. Even and when you're carrying twins. Yes. Yes. Or multiple and pregnancies. Yes. Another yeah. good thing is with people going to school is 
there are people now who are trained. I, if I feel I can't, if I feel I'm not comfortable advising you on nutrition, I know a nutritionist I can call and say, talk to this woman about what she requires in her dietary intake as a pregnant woman. Again, manage your patient as a multidisciplinary team. You do not know it all as a gynecologist. Yeah. If you're not a nutritionist, it's not in your place. Refer. They will. They'll be known. The, the, the nutritionists will know what to tell them. All right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So another point about uh, when it comes to staying healthy during pregnancy, mm -hmm. what's the role of vitamins and supplements in enriching the mom and enriching the baby? So research-wise, um, so a lot of patients will come and tell you, I am on this whole bunch of multi supplements. There's so many companies right now, many brands of multi -sup uh, multivitamin supplements. For me as a doctor, I want my patient to get calcium and I want my patient to get folic acid and iron. Right. Anything else you will get from your fruits and your vegetables. There is no research that has proven multivitamins other than the ones we recommend in pregnancy are an absolute necessity. I'm sure mothers never took them. Oh, in, and then the other, th the other which is important, which has been shown for brain development of the baby is omega-3. Omega-3. So the important supplements are calcium, folic acid, uh, iron supplement, and anything which has omega-3. Okay. The other ones, they are not harmful if you want to take them. Some people say they, they, they improve their appetite, which is fine. They are not harmful. But research hasn't told us it is cut in stone that you must prescribe them. Mm. The four that I've mentioned are the ones at least a patient should be on, and preferably before they even conceive. Mm. Yes. Right. Mm. You know, staying healthy during pregnancy for some people means joining some organized form of platform I will call it Lamas. Mm -hmm. How is Lamas important? Because there are people who are, they tell themselves, mm -hmm. maybe now our mothers didn't have Lamas. Why do I need to sign up for Lamas classes? Mm -hmm. What's the role of being in a platform like that mm -hmm. in enriching your journey mm -hmm. while you're pregnant in mm -hmm. staying healthy? Yeah. So one thing I think I've observed about Lamas from those who attended Lamas classes, I think is also finding a community of other women to work with. That's, uh, that's necessary. It, that's necessary. How is your pregnancy? A place where you're all discussing what's going on, what are the issues you're having, what are the joys of, of being pregnant. Lamas basically is offered by certified trainers in Lamas training, and there are very few in Nairobi. So um, basically, they're birthing classes. Right. So you're going to be taught about the different positions of birthing. Now, it is very easy in default hospital settings that the mother gives birth on her back. You can give birth in any position you want. And the purpose of Lamas is to teach you the different positions. And ideally, you're supposed to attend with your spouse. Uh, you know, it's a daily, <laughs> yeah, attend with your husband. So that he also knows where to massage, how to hold you, and the different, and how will he take his position depending on the position you prefer in. So those who want to be on their fours. I've had patients who tell me, I want to be on my knees and... You know, and we are afraid we are going to be accused of mistreating a patient, but that's what is comfortable for her. Another one wants to be on the big uh, gym ball and rock on that ball. So Lamas teaches them how to position themselves in different positions for birthing. Okay. And how to, you know, if you're told to, you know, when you're giving birth to open your legs, how do you hold your legs? How do you push the baby out? So Lamas works for some women. Others, they have said it doesn't help, but majority say it does help. And a lot of these Lamas uh, trainers actually, they come to your house. And that's the convenience of Nairobi, is they come to your house and teach you. And the same women can walk, be with you during labor as well. So we do encourage that spouses are there during labor, but uh, a lot of men just <laughs> look absolutely clueless. And uh, it's just not their thing. But I mean, let me tell you, men are changing. A lot of men are coming to delivery rooms and labor rooms. <laughs> In fact, I wanted to ask you, yes. one out of 10 dads right now, mm -hmm. how many of them, one out of 10, on a scale of one to 10, how many dads do you, do you have, uh, do you find them being comfortable being in the delivery room, not in the labor ward, in the delivery room. In the delivery room. Yes, in I'll the middle of the action. Majority. Really? I don't, I, I'll say more than 50%. So five out but of 10. But it depends on the setting. So if we're in Kenyatta, no. Is it? Now, Kenyatta, it is... Now the, the, the setting of a public hospital is in such that privacy may not be guaranteed for every patient. Yeah. Um, if you go to a hospital like Pumwani or the public sector, you find that the delivery room setting uh, may not offer privacy for each patient. Yeah. So spouses are not normally allowed. In private hospital setting, the patient has her own delivery suit. Sp the spouse is there. We normally prefer spouse, but those who call mother, mother-in-law, we prefer the spouse to be there. But it's interesting. This 
guys these days majority a few will say a hey, doc I, <laughs> I <tell laughs> them, <laughs> yes but be clear with your spouse that she's okay that of course some of them get upset yeah but again you don't want uh, also another patient you know a, a, a guy fainting for you because he couldn't <laughs> hack it. And then you have another um, patient yes. in your hands. Yes, another patient in your hands. So what we normally advise, because it is a little bit of a messy affair, is stand on this side of your wife. There are those guys who actually want to watch the delivery. Really, we, it, free reign. It is your family that is coming. It is okay. But no, most we uh, hold your wife's hand and stand on this side. Yeah? If you feel you want to be on that, it's, it's really up to you. There is no restriction. These days we've made it very easy for spouses to enjoy um the, the, the whole process the whole and process involve them and involve them right so even telling oh man please lie on your back and push she if, if i tell her do you, do you are you comfortable in your back do you want to change yes doctor i want to be on my fours i want to push on my fours get on your fours i want to push i had one i remember who told me i want to be on the floor and i was like we're gonna be in trouble but that was her comfort zone. Dr. how can you empower a mom watching right now mm -hmm. to have this voice that you are encouraging us to have, mm -hmm. to have this conversation with my doctor at that moment that my preference right now mm -hmm. is I would want to be on my foes or to be on the ball or to, you know, mm -hmm. because we feel that the doctor has uh, authority over this process and I don't mm -hmm. want to offend my doctor or to look mm -hmm. like I know so much mm -hmm. or... How do you empower a mom in this moment issue. in time? Yeah, and that's the issue, is don't be afraid to be able to ask your doctor anything and everything. You are allowed to go and do your research. As you're saying, some of the things you're saying, you're researching, you're saying, oh, I found this on Google. Yeah. And um, there was a guy on Facebook the other day, an American guy, who was talking about how women are being disserviced by delivering in what is considered to be an unnatural way. Right. In some cultures, the woman is on a stool. A bathing Traditionally, stool. a bathing stool, traditionally, and she delivers when she's squatting. Discuss all this with your doctor. Now, certain patients, we may be the ones to direct you on a certain position because of maybe a condition we feel, like yes. a cardiac patient. Yes. If you have a heart condition, we won't even allow you to push. We are actually supposed to pull the baby out for you. Friend. Thank you, Dr. Yes. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And with that, we come to the end of today's episode of Today's Parent, where we were talking about how to stay healthy during your pregnancy. We had Dr. Kakuti here in studio sharing tips with you. And to the dads who are watching, she has emphasized, walk the journey with your partner. Enjoy the journey together and support her where you can. And for the moms who are watching, even if you are a second time, third time mom, make sure you go for your clinics. Exercise is important as well as nutrition. We come to the end of today's show. We've been here in studio at Little Cribs, the home of fun, exciting, and durable kids' furniture. For more information, even for pregnant pregnancy, go to www.supermamas.co.ke where you'll get more tips on how you can stay healthy during your pregnancy. It's been a pleasure having you. We look forward to having you next time. 